So, um, this guy is sort of walking around, uh, or rolling around here. Uh, hi, hello, how are you? Uh, alarmingly, this robot has stopped blinking. He's shaking his head at me now. Uh, is it? Yeah, okay, sorry. He wants me to go. Um, oh, don't fly! Don't fly! Um, wow, there's a lot of robots here. And you know, the irony is that they, they're still kind of scary. I just. Hello? How's it going? Yeah, you like that? Hello? No, he's not impressed. He's not impressed. Uh, probably you're looking at the video with the same expression on your face. Now, here we are at the printed world. You can see. People are starting now to crowd around uh, the different brands that uh, have come here. But the busy table, the really busy table here is uh, over uh, Shapeways, which is cool because I use Shapeways, so I feel that's, you know, I'm obviously in the right zone. Uh, and if we're looking across the table here, you know, we can see some awesome work here. Now, um, Richard. Yes, hello. Okay, hi, this is Richard. Uh, Richard produces 3D printed puzzles here and various other interesting things. Richard, why don't you take us through some of this stuff? Particularly, I'm interested in the springy ones. Okay, well, I started out designing lots of little puzzle cubes and then I had the idea that rather than a solid cube, because 3D printing of solid materials is quite expensive, why not make them hollow? And then instead of just having a whole hole in the middle, Think about the cube being the, uh, the eight corners and then joining them in interesting ways. So each of these pieces is a, is a cube with the corners joined by a piece of material. That's, that piece is fairly rigid, but if you join the corners with a, a zigzag spring, you end up with a very springy material. So this is, uh, this is a very springy puzzle. Wow. And this is very intricate work. You've got a lot of interesting colours here as well. Now, I understand you do a lot of uh, your own post-production. Yeah, the best material for making puzzles out of is nylon because it's very strong but quite flexible, but it, it only comes in white. And uh, Shapeways do a, a dyeing service. And I discovered that they, uh, they use this kind of nylon dye. Yeah. Um, it comes in a whole range of colours. You just need a teaspoonful of powder in a load of pan of boiling water. 30 seconds in that and it's permanently dyed in whatever colour you want. And how does the colour take up? So colour take up is something I'm very interested in because you remember, you remember when we were kids and you go and you buy your cheap pair of bright green jeans and you'd wear them and the dye would come out. Does the dye, is it really fast? Do you need to fix that with anything? You don't have to do anything special to fix it. But after it's come out of the pan, I rinse it in cold water and I run it under cold water for about five minutes. Um, then I dry it on paper and it really doesn't come off on your hands. Wow. So it's pretty good. Now I see you've done some other things here. I was having a look at the rep wrap around the corner, yes. which is run with a raspberry pie, which just made it super awesome for me. I must go and have a look at that because I haven't got mine connected to it. Okay, right, right. Oh, you got a raspberry pie already? I have. I was looking at some of the items here that you've rep wrap produced. And they have a slightly glossier finish. They've got a really quite an interesting material. Is that because they're made in the ABS? Um, yes, the, the PLA comes out with a, a naturally shinier finish that, than the ABS does. But ABS dissolves in acetone. Yeah. So if you dip your pieces, I haven't got any finished pieces here, but if you dip them in uh, acetone vapour, you get a very, very smooth, glossy finish. Really? So people have just started experimenting with that as a, as a surface finish. And the things like statues, it's looking brilliant. Yeah. And they're also experimenting with things that you can do that with PLA. They're very nasty, toxic chemicals at the moment. Yeah. So there's some chemists working on that one as well. So, so what's very interesting, though, yeah, for me, is, is that... Um, I've been, you know, noticing that although it starts on a computer, there's nothing easy about it. There's a lot of craft involved. There's an awful lot of skills involved. I've been accumulating uh, 3D package skills, um, the engineering skills to make a 3D printer, the electronic skills to put it all together. And uh, I think part of the problem at the moment is it isn't easy for people to get into. I think buying a 3D printer as a, as a ready-made package from a shop is the beginning. But even then, you need things to print. So a, a site like Thingiverse is a great place because you can just download ready-to-print models. But um, the 3D design packages generally have quite a steep learning curve. 
Um, although there are many really good free ones out there, uh, they do take a bit of learning. So I think there's a, there are opportunities for people who have those skills to um, make models for people to print on their home printers. Okay, so I've got one more question about Thingiverse. Are you uploading your models there? Do you open source it? I'm Rich Gain on Thingiverse, and uh, every time I design something, I put it up there and give it away for people to download free. Okay, so so how do you feel that's going to evolve? Uh, how is copyright and uh, uh, IP going to develop in this world of that's 3D printing? That's a really interesting question because there are other sites. Thingiverse is one where everything is free. There are sites where people have tried to set up a service where people can upload models for other people to download and buy. But how are they going to control those models? Once they've been bought, they can just be shared and you can print as many copies as you like. They haven't cracked that and I'm not sure that I want them to. I think all, all of this is possible because of free software, free hard, open hardware and freely available models that people are willing to share so that other people can evolve. So uh, something brilliant like that Barry, um, which is one of my favorite pieces, came out of somebody's head, but it's an evolution of some other pieces like a herringbone gear and a, a needle bearing. And it's only by sharing ideas that new ideas evolve. So I, I quite dislike the idea of making things very restrictive and paid for. I understand there need to be business models where people make money out of it. I don't know how it's going to come out. It's a very interesting question. It is very interesting. I, I have to say, I really like the idea of the, the open source world producing all of this. And it does seem like a shame if at the last minute some huge manufacturer comes in and says, right, that's it. I tried to sue anyone. The good news is, is that that's what the music companies tried to do with file trading, and that didn't work out, and in the end they had to change. So this could be a transformative effect for manufacturing around the world. It could well do. It could change everything. Awesome. Richard Gain, find him on Thingiverse, find him on Shapeways, check out his awesome stuff. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much.